Knee pain is something that comes to us all, but yet it's so mysterious. Often we can get knee pain from nowhere. We didn't fall over, we didn't get tackled, we weren't in some crazy accident, yet we just wake up some mornings and our knee is sore. It's in pain and we're confused and we do not understand why or what is happening. Is there something wrong with us? And I'm here to tell you that no, there's nothing wrong with you. And there's actually a simple explanation for all of it. And I will tell you all about it in today's video. Hello guys, my name is Paul DeFizio and welcome to my summer kitchen in Sicily. Today, I want to let you in on a little secret. I can diagnose your pain without any physical assessment or imaging, especially if there was no clear mechanism of injury. And what that means is you did not fall over, you did not get tackled, and you cannot remember being in any sort of accident, yet you have this pain which felt like it came from nowhere. Don't believe me? Well then join me in today's video where I will show you how to self-diagnose four common knee injuries that do not have a clear mechanism of injury. We are going to be looking at patellofemoral pain syndrome and patella tendinopathy as a two-in-one. Then we are going to talk about Hoffa's fat pad syndrome. And then we are going to look at iliotibial band syndrome and finally we need osteoarthritis. And after that, I'm going to show you a brand new way of rehabbing these types of injuries. So please stick around to the very end. Patella, knee bone, femoral, leg bone, pain, pain. So this is essentially knee pain. And it is common between people at the age of 20 to 50. We see it a lot in runners and active people, but it is not exclusive to them. You will know that you have patellofemoral pain syndrome because you will have one of these signs. Pain with your knee at 90 degrees of flexion. So that can be sitting in the chair with your feet on the ground at 90 degrees. You will also find that you will have pain when you squat down to 90 degrees or beyond. And then finally, another common sign is that you have pain when going up the stairs and you lead with the leg where the pain is coming from. The other thing that we're looking for here is no clear mechanism of injury. And you will find that the pain is on the outside and or the inside of the knee. And it's often described as like a dull ache. And when you do any of these activities, that aggravates it more. The walking and the running and all of those signs and symptoms that we discussed. So what causes this pain is simple. Too much, too soon. We often see that someone has gone from either zero to hero, so maybe no walking, to walking 5K a few times per week. Or going from running three times a week and doing 5K, five kilometers, and deciding to suddenly run three times a week still, but do 15 kilometers. That sudden increase in the physical demands that you are putting your body through is what's causing that diffuse, widespread ache and pain. Patellar tendinopathy is pretty much the same story, but a different presentation. So the patellar tendon connects the quadriceps muscle down onto the tibial tuberosity on your shin bone. And this tendon is where the pain is coming from. So you will find that people would describe pinpoint pain underneath their kneecap going all the way down to potentially where their tibial tuberosity is. And they will describe a stronger ache, sometimes a sharper pain. And the signs and symptoms are the same. The only difference is that it's coming directly from your tendon. And why does this happen? It's the exact same, too much too soon, but it's because of the role that tendons play in the body. I like to think of them as the electronic switching station. So if you imagine a city that has its source of electricity from somewhere and there is a new block of the city built, which means it has higher demands of electricity. And what happens is there is a sudden increase in power that is pulled from the source and that comes to the switching station. If the switching station cannot handle it, what happens? Blackout. And that is essentially tendon pain in a nutshell. That is exactly what happens, blackout. And all of a sudden, normal function from that tendon, helping the, the joint move and everything becomes difficult. The treatment and rehab for both of these injuries is the same. It is all about education, pain management, rehabilitation, and strengthening of the knee and the hip. Hoffa's fat pad is a fluid-like structure that sits just below your kneecap. It's like oil for the car, providing lubrication for the knee joint. 
It can often become a source of pain and swelling. However, uh, the reasons why are usually overload again, so doing too much too soon, but also other systemic factors make people more likely than others, but we are still not exactly sure what factors that is. We're still learning a lot about this injury. It is relatively new. You will find that it is common between people who are of the ages of 20 and 50 again, and we see it a lot in hikers over any other type of activity, which will become clear in a moment. But again, it is not exclusive to them. So the signs and symptoms are pain with extension rather than flexion. So if you feel the pain more, if you are standing for a long time, 30 minutes or more, that's a sign. If you feel the pain, if you go up onto your tiptoes and try walk around, that's a sign. If you feel the pain more when you're wearing high heels, you've been wearing high heels all night, again, that's another sign. And finally, if you have pain when you go down the stairs, but lead with that affected leg and put all your weight on it, that is another sign. And the reason is, is because all of those movements put extra pressure on the fat pad. And when it has become a source of pain, it is often swollen. So there is additional compression on that inflammation. And you'll see that it is usually between zero and 30 degrees is where it gets the maximum compression. And that's what all of those movements do. But if you go up onto your tiptoes or you're in high heels, you add an extra source of compression as well. And if we think about hiking, there's a lot of going up, but there's also a lot of going down. And that is why we think that that is the most common activity associated with it. If you want to check it yourself, it's very easy. You will often find a bubble of swelling just below the kneecap. So take a seat with your back straight, legs flat out, and just look at them and compare or ask someone else to. And if you want to get really creative, put your thumb on your patella, on your kneecap, pull it back, and then rub with this finger in underneath that quite aggressively, and you should start to be reproducing the pain there. In terms of treatment, it's really straightforward. You actually want to take an ice cube and rub it directly onto that swelling until that ice cube melts be quite aggressive with it. That is a really, really good way to reduce the swelling and to reduce the pain in the short term. You're also going to combine that with a lot of other rest outside of that, avoiding the aggravators and building up your knee strength gradually, focusing on flexion. Iliotibial band syndrome is often described as a strong, dull ache all the way up the side of the thigh with also some pinpoint pain in and around the knee on the outside. This pain is common between people the ages of 20 and 50 and we see it a lot in runners. And you can replicate this pain by putting your painful foot on top of your other knee and sitting with your leg out the way and that could compress on it and then also trying to sit with your legs crossed and stretching over. What you'll also find is that it is painful to touch. So if someone was to press up and down the side of your thigh, and particularly if they are to press on the insertion point within the knee joint, right around here, then that usually reproduces the pain. The iliotibial band is a thick and fibrous structure. And we used to think that the cause of this injury was purely friction. So essentially what would happen is someone's iliotibial band would get a little inflamed usually at the insertion point where it is in the knee joint and you have lots of other structures around it, muscles, tendons, bone, cartilage. And it would essentially just rub across those things and then cause pain up the leg. Very straightforward. So then what we did was we said that people should do foam rolling because to roll over that inflammation and simply push out the fluid, no swelling, no pain. But we now know through decades of studies and imaging you can have people who have clear signs of friction on imaging but no pain and people who have no signs of friction on imaging but pain. So the injury is not as simple. We also know that the iliotibial band is very, very important in supporting and stabilizing the hip and the knee when we move, particularly when we go to one leg movements. So when we start to run and jump and sprint and change direction. And that is why we see it in a lot of people who are running or who are more athletic. It's not as common in people who just walk a lot. And the cause is usually just a mismatch. Most people are running very regularly, but they are not strengthening enough to support that running. Think of it like someone who is a marathon runner, but they only train like someone who is a recreational runner. They're not pushing their body enough in the gym to meet those demands. 
and the inner tibial band cannot handle it. It's that simple. So again, the rehabilitation is really, really focusing on hip strength and knee strength and gradually building back up that running cadence and distance along with that. If you are enjoying this video so far, please like this video and subscribe to the channel and share this video with someone who you think can benefit it. There are over 1 billion people who are estimated to suffer from MSK pain, which is what I cover on this channel. So if you're watching this video and thinking this is not affecting me personally, there will be someone out there who can benefit from my words. So please share it with them. It would mean a lot to me. And yeah, let's get back to today's video. Knee osteoarthritis. Again, our common indicator here is just age. Anyone who's over the age of 50 and will describe themselves as having a strong and dull ache in one of their knees, outside, inside, around the entire thing, especially worse in the morning, eases a little bit as the day goes on, but responds really well to some anti-inflammatory medications. But if I walk too much, I can feel a lot of pain. We are thinking knee osteoarthritis. Now, this is a really, really misunderstood injury and condition and syndrome, and we are still learning so much about it. The most important thing is that for any physiotherapist, doctor, or whoever to diagnose it, we do not need imaging. Symptoms alone and the story is enough. And furthermore, we should not do surgery. We hold off on surgery for as long as we can. Knee osteoarthritis is the natural progression of our body over time. This is just something that comes to us all. Now, we used to think it was just a very simple case of wear and tear. Essentially, you've been using your knee your whole life, and now all the cartilage within the knee joint is gone, bone is hitting bone, and it's just getting really, really bad. So if it gets so, so bad, we'll just do a knee replacement. But we now know that this is a really multifactorial systemic injury that has a lot of metabolic symptoms and factors that go into it. So it is much more complicated than just wear and tear. The prime example, again, is that we see people on imaging who have beautiful knees, full cartilage and everything looks wonderful and there should be no pain, yet they suffer a lot of arthritic type pain. And then you have people who have terrible knees. It looks like they've got like no cartilage left and they are running around and jumping still, even though they're 75 years old and they have no pain in their knee whatsoever. So we know there is so much more going on than just that. It is difficult to understand because we still don't fully understand it as therapists and doctors. But what I would say is, is think about it like how environments on planet Earth change over time. We've all heard that the Sahara Desert used to actually be more lush and green. It wasn't always so dry and barren. But over time, the environment naturally changed. And now it is like that. Yes, there are things that the humans could have done to preserve it longer. Ancient Egyptians could have been more cautious about their water usage and thought about thousands of years later and not drain so much water from the Nile to grow their crops or whatever. But essentially, it was always going to happen. But there are some things that they can control. And there are things that you can control now. You can control your stress levels better. You can eat a clean diet, and eat minimally processed foods, and you can exercise more regularly and more robustly. And you can talk to your therapist or doctor, doctor regularly to create a robust rehabilitation plan, which is going to focus on knee range of movement and strength, cycling, walking, squatting. It's all great. And as long as you have that consistent and ongoing care and attention, we can see that there's going to be less need for surgery down the line. And for all of these injuries, the treatment is much the same. Education and exercise towards your personalized goals. That is it. And that is why I want to try something new. Meet Busy, my AI rehab assistant. Yes, you heard me right. How does it work? It's very, very simple. Busy has what's called a knowledge base. Now, ChatGPT uses the internet to find information. Busy has a specialized knowledge base which consists of all the different injuries that we deal with and all the best rehab protocols associated with those injuries, as well as the skills and knowledge around strength and conditioning, how to build it up, how to progress, and how to work towards 
your goals, just like I would with you if I was working with you one to one. The disclaimer would be that this is only really for people who know what type of injury they have. So if you're not sure or clear on your diagnosis, even after watching this video, go talk to your doctor, go talk to your physiotherapist or physical therapist, get a better idea, and then you can come back and try this. The great thing is, is that you don't have to put in any personal data or anything whatsoever, just the injury that you have, the pain that you're experiencing, the range of pain that you would be comfortable going into, what your goals are, what do you want to return to doing, and what sort of equipment do you have? Do you have a gym? Are you at home or whatever? Once it has all of this information, it will create a personalized rehab program just for you that you can easily follow with links to videos and descriptions on the exercises and everything. Now, this is a test. So your feedback and input is so, so important because this is really, really out there and really crazy. But I really want to try this so that I can actually start helping you all so much more than just by educating through the videos. So all you have to do is just sign up with your name and your email, and then we will connect and you can try this out for yourself. And let me know in the comments below if you have signed up. And if so, if you like it, what you think, please let me know. It would mean so, so much to me. And that's it, my big secret. I hope this video helped you understand your pain better today. And as a result, has made you feel a little bit better. If you enjoyed this style of content, please let me know in the comments below and I can make videos about every joint in the body in this format. And until then, bye.